So this video will be something of an addendum to our Windows series. Um, if you're feeling confident in the Windows, if it all makes sense, um, we're just going to kind of be re re revisiting and, and reiterating a lot of the techniques that we've seen already. I just wanted to show very explicitly how to model the upper level or the upper uh, uh, zone windows, just so that um, you know if you if you are following along and and maybe it's a little confusing uh, that we kind of go through everything step by step together. So. Um, I'm back in my Rhino scene now. Um, again, if you're feeling confident in Windows, you can go ahead and skip this. We're not going to show anything new here. We're just going to revisit a lot of the techniques we've seen already. So I'm back in my Rhino scene now. And um, if you remember, I, I, um, I isolated all the other elements except for just these couple that we were working on. So I'm going to go ahead and type show, uh, show into my um, command line here uh, in order to unhide all of those other surfaces, all those other surface elements. And let me come over to my layers. And so we've been working on this Windows first floor layer, and we've been building our first floor uh, windows. So I could come through and I could keep building all the rest of my windows. So why don't we do that super quickly? Come to my C plane, and I'll say set C plane to surface, and I'll select the surface. I'll set my uh, origin, and I'll come over here to my surface tools and use a rectangular tool. And again, I normally would not recommend using uh, snapping to CAD geometry. But um, in this case, I know the CAD geometry is OK. So I'm just going to um, apply those apply those uh, those elements there. And so I'll just come around. I'll go to this surface. I'll say, now, re now set my construction plane to this surface. Do the same thing. Just use my rectangle tool to drag out some rectangles hit the space bar to repeat the previous command, draw out a rectangle there. And then lastly, I've got my uh, element here. So I'll come up to my set C plane to surface. And there we go. Whoops. And lastly, let's go ahead and set these guys. Remember, we need to um, split this down the middle. So I'll come in here and I'll hover to get that little white um, reference. And then Rhino will help me find the midpoint. And then I'll use my scale 1D. So scale 1D command uh, to uh, just stretch that out a little bit. Well, stop it. Sorry, I don't normally have my start menu on the left. I'm not used to it. I did that so that we would have a lot of, um, we would have enough screen real estate for, for, uh, for the video series. Uh, so it always surprises me when it pops up. OK, so in any event, we've now got all of our surfaces. And of course, we could go through. We could come to our properties, and we probably should. We could come through, and we could label them all as East Window Floor 1, Unit 1. Um, and we could come through and label all of these so that they show up properly. Stop. So that they show up properly in our um, in our uh, uh, PHPP. I won't. I won't do that. Waste your time doing that now. But you could go through, and um, we could we could label each one of those guys so that again they show up properly later on. Uh, when we're done there, I'm going to go ahead and set my seaplane back to uh, world top. OK, so that's fine. Come into my uh, 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 layers here. And I could select all of my layers, select all the objects on the layer. So these are all the first floor windows. And now if I was to come back to Rhino, I could uh, reset, I reset the reference and say select all of those uh, and then have them flow through now. Now, the problem with that is we haven't set up the, uh, well, I mean, it'll work. It'll work fine. And for all of these units that we haven't set up, let me do it this way, do select objects, isolate. There we go. So for all of the units that we have not yet set any parameters for, if I was to come into my uh, properties and take a look at the attribute user text, notice we don't have any parameters for those yet. Some of them we have set up and some of them we have not. So for all the ones that we haven't set any parameters for, um, this tool is just going to apply those honeybee defaults. So just real quick, let's go ahead and just apply some. So I'm going to come into here in my Passos tools. I'm going to come into set window parameters. So I just I selected all of those unassigned units. And let's just say, for purposes of argument, let's say they're all OptiWin Purista. They're all single bane climate top one. And let's just set them all to A for now and hit OK. 
So we've now set all of our um, parameters, and if we want to force those parameters through, I can just force that geometry to update there. That'll flow through in our uh, Rhino scene, or excuse me, Grasshopper scene. So again, to do that, uh, to sort of force that update, I just reconnect the geometry to the aperture, and that forces everything to recalculate. I could also right-click and say recompute. That would also sort of force the update there. If we were going to be doing lots of changes, by the way, maybe I would use a um, maybe I would use a pipeline instead of an explicit reference. In here, we could reference everything from our you know Windows, uh, you know first floor, whatever it is, first floor, right? So I could I could reference that layer and just pull in everything, pull in everything automatically. Uh, which one's which? Geometry pipe. What is this one? I always forget which one is which. B rep filter. Oh, mesh type filter. Yeah, I don't want meshes. Right. So we would pull everything in automatically, and that would that would automatically update. Why does that not work? I, oh, O2 windows. O2 windows. There we go. So all of that would would come in, and if I was to add a new uh, a new any new surface notice that it, that appears um, so the pipeline is sort of constantly looking back at the back at that layer um, and it's going to take anything from that layer and bring it in and, and sort of force the update so th that's fine we could do it that way if we wanted to um, whatever use your explicit reference though okay so the point here though of this uh, quick video was to show that that's how we that's how we do all of our our elements here but if we want to do our upper story, so if we want to do our second story windows, so let me um, show, we have to make sure that we're applying them to the second floor, or excuse me, the second floor zone. So what do I mean by that? Let's come in here and let's do second floor. And let me add that here. And let's make that our active uh, layer. So now we're going to model the second floor windows. And it'll come in here and just the same way as we were doing before, I'll come in, select a surface, go to C planes, and set this as the uh, set C plane to the surface. And then I can use my standard rectangle tools to go ahead and drag a drag a rectangle here. Um, and there we go. So now we've got some second floor. Set this back to world top. So now we've got some second floor windows and. Um, Let's uh, let's just let's uh, set their material parameters. So back in Passfiles Tools, I'll go to Set Window Parameters, and let's just set those as uh, OptiWind Purista. I'll set the glazing to Climate Top One and the variant type to A again, and hit OK. So we've now set up our second floor windows. But how do we get those into Grasshopper properly? Well, I would not add them to this <laughs> first. First. I would not add them to the first floor windows set. It would not be, they would not work if I tried to feed them in here because Honeybee would try and host these surfaces on the first floor geometry and it would fail. It wouldn't know what to do with that. So what that means is we have to uh, duplicate this configuration for our second, for our second floor. So let me do this. I'll pull this down a little bit. I'll pull this guy down here. I'm going to select all of these elements. So I'm going to select my aperture, Honeybee aperture. I'm going to select my PHPP aperture. I'm going to select my add, uh, uh, add subsurface. And I'm going to select my geometry reference. I'm going to come up to edit. I'm going to say copy. And I'm going to say edit. And I'm going to say paste. So I just made a copy of all those elements. And I'm going to move them up so that they are alongside the second floor objects. And all I need to do is I need to change this input for the honeybee objects from the first floor faces to the second floor faces. And now notice it's going to complain for a second. It's going to say, hey, you gave me a bunch of first floor windows and a bunch of second floor faces. And so I can't, I can't match those. I'm, I'm failing to host these surfaces, these, these lower first floor window surfaces on any of the upper level geometry. Right, so we need to reset this geometry input. So we'll call this our second floor windows. And in this case, 
I'm going to just select just these guys. I'll say right click, say multiple geometry. And notice as soon as I do that, now this is happy. I can select my output feed it into my geometry input on the second floor or the faces of the second floor and now we're off and running. So we have kind of two, uh, let me clean up a little bit here, so we've got kind of two sets. We've got a we've got a second floor and we've got a first floor. All right, maybe we'll do, let's do it this way just to keep it super clean. We'll sort of do this, do that, say uh, Centrino, where are you? There you are. And I'll just draw that as a nice straight line instead. And now I'll say load from Rhino. And do that. Go ahead and delete those. All right, so there. So now we'll do that. And let's clean this up. We'll put this over here. Make this a dashed line. And let's even add ourselves some headings. So I'll use my scribble. And we'll call this first floor level. Let's make it a little bigger. Let's make it 50. And we'll put this one here and we'll call this second floor level. And I guess let's move the whole thing down a little bit, give ourselves a little bit of space here from our main heading. All right, so we've got our create honeybee zones, our second floor level. We're gonna take in our second floor geometry and our second floor windows. Those are all gonna to flow together. They're gonna to create a second floor room, which then gets sent to the solve adjacency. We do the same thing with the first floor. We've got our first floor surfaces. Reset this. We've got our first floor surfaces, and we've got our first floor windows. Those get combined together using the add subsurface. Those get uh, added together to create a first floor room that gets merged in with our second floor room sent to the solve adjacencies. Right. So this is one zone and this is another zone and we need to kind of keep them separate and organized from one another. So we need to kind of set each, uh, each um, set of um, elements on, on its own. And again, we can't send the second floor windows and try and host it on the first floor geometry, or vice versa. We can't sit the first floor windows and try and host them on the second floor geometry, et cetera. So hopefully that all makes sense. That's our that's going to be our, our setup there for the window input. And of course, we should and, and, and would um, go through and build out all the rest of our second floor windows, uh, and then, uh, of course, add the names to all of our objects as well, so that all those names are flowing through properly into our PHPP file. So hopefully that all makes sense. Again, if you're following along and, and confused by any of that, maybe go back and take another take another watch. Um, but this would be the preferred way to set up your zones. Um, again, you want to keep everything separate and everything itemized and, and organized so that you know what's what and sort of how things are flowing through. So uh, as I said, in, um, in our next series of videos, I think what we'll do is turn our attention to the interiors. I think we've got a reasonable... Um, We've got most of what we need in order to calculate the envelope of our building. We've got all of our construction assemblies and our surface geometry. We've got our windows and all of our parameters. Um, but if you look at the PHPP, we're not getting any results yet. And that's because we haven't entered any information about the interior, in particular, the interior net floor area of the building. So when we come back in the next series of videos, I think we'll turn our attention to the interior spaces. We'll start talking about um, interior PHPP spaces. We'll look at TFA surfaces and how we assign and configure all of those elements. So I'll see you back in the next series of videos where we'll turn our attention towards the interior of our building.